Okay, uh, good evening. Um, my name is John King, and we're, we're here this evening for uh, an, um, a CEQA scoping meeting for an EIR, Environmental Impact Report, for the North Paramount Gateway Specific Plan, which has been underway for, um, for about a year. We're about um, at a halfway point right now, and we're um, excited to be moving forward. So just to start off with the meeting agenda, um, we're going to begin with, with introductions and um, talk a little more about what, what is CEQA, what's, what's the purpose, and how does this all fit together with uh, the scoping meeting that we are doing this evening. We'll go over the project, and, um, and in this, this overview, I do, do kind of want to add up, up front that the documents are on the city website, and we'll be talking about that a little more. And with that, then we'll get into the uh, actual overview of the environmental review process and digging deep into what, what is an EIR and, and how um, it will relate to this um, project and, um, and go over uh, comments and, and questions. And we're happy to get feedback, if not this evening, um, you know, within the next few weeks for, the, for this portion of the uh, environmental Im impact report scoping. So uh, just to introduce us, so the, uh, on, the, on the city side, um, well, again, I'm John King. I'm the assistant planning director. Um, the director of the department is, is John Carver. And also involved is Ivan Reyes. Um, Ivan is the uh, associate planner. And then uh, here this evening are um, the preparers of the environmental impact report. And they're from um, a firm called EPD Solutions. And we, um, we have here August. Um, August McNabb, he's the associate CEQA planner. And we also have Danielle there. She's the associate CEQA planner. And we're very pleased to, to have them with us with their um, expertise to um, help us all. Now, what, what is the purpose of this meeting? Um, the purpose is to provide an overarching view of this project, of this specific plan project, and to solicit comments. So we, we really do rely on public participation. Um, we don't just say that. that. That is a defining principle of the planning department. It's a, it's a philosophy of, of the city. Um, in terms of transparency, we want to you know, shed light on, on what the project is. And to make it a better project, uh, take, take comments. And this will help refine the scope, the focus, and content of the Program Environmental Impact Report, the PEIR. Do you want to step back for a moment and discuss a spe specific plan? What, what is a specific plan? So that's this is something that's, um, I was about to say it's a common um, term in the planning world in the state of California, but maybe it's not not so common. Um, so we have a good uh, discussion here on, on this slide. Specific plan is a comprehensive planning and zoning document for a defined geographic region. So in traditional city land use plans, there's a uh, zoning map where there's some, you know, you can call it just tra traditional zoning. In, in Par Paramount, we have a commercial zone. We have a few residential zones. We have some manufacturing zones. Well, specific plan just kind of hones in on a, a defined area. It's on, so the focus is a smaller geographic area than what happens in the general plan and the zoning um, ordinance, so it's like a neighborhood. And these plans, uh, like I say, they bridge the gap between the implementing implementing policies noted in the general plan and the zoning code, and the individual and the individual proposals within that area. So adoption is what's called, considered a legislative act, similar to the adoption of a general plan or a zoning ordinance. Legislative act that means it it goes to the um, you know the, the the city council in the end it goes um, to the planning commission for a recommendation and then on to the city council. Specific plans aren't, are not technically a part of a city's general plan. They stand alone, specific plans stand alone, and they re replace the general plan for an area with extra detail, more customized regulatory framework, and there's an em emphasis on implementation that it's not possible with a general plan. That's actually part of state law is the um, implementation portions of the, of the plan. What, it's not just you know, have a plan for the sake of having a plan. It's how do you make it happen? How do you, in the real world, make it happen? 
So next we'll get into the uh, actual project overview. So um, here's a, a map on, on the right. This is the um, area in Paramount. Um, let's see if I can get this mouse to work. But um, this, you can see the intersection there. The main intersection is, um, yeah, Ivan's helping me out. So left to right, that's Rosecrans Avenue. And north to south is, is Paramount Boulevard. So this is a, a very distinct and very, uh, it's a, oops, it's a major intersection in the, in the city of Paramount. And so to the north of that, there are now two existing specific plan areas. On the left is that Clearwater North specific plan area. And on the right side or the, to the uh, east of Paramount Boulevard is the Howe Orizaba specific plan. And both of these were developed in the late 1980s. They're very outdated. They've been around a long time. And actually, there's been some, you know, through, through time, they may be considered a little bit irrelevant. So we had the opportunity, starting a few, couple years ago, we, we had this kind of had this idea to combine them into a single specific plan and we will and rename it. So that's what we're doing um, with this project. It's now the it would become the North Paramount Gateway Specific Plan. You can see it's kind of a highlighted orangish area. So also to add, you'll see in, along Paramount Boulevard, there's, there's a few parcels that, that are not part of these existing plans. We would basically fill those in. So, so those, they would uh, become part, those areas along Paramount Boulevard would become a part of this new plan. So it slightly expands the area. Um, and then a lot of this is about sustainability, so providing long-term reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and reducing vehicle miles traveled. In the last few years, Paramount has um, kind of turned a corner, and we, uh, we really have taken the mantle of, of uh, sustainability and, you know, greening. It, it's um, very imp important to Par Paramount. Um, it says, well, our, our logo is safe, healthy, and attractive. And that's, um, it really ties in, into that. You know, it sums up what the city's slogan is, safe, healthy, and attractive. So su supporting sustainability efforts, promoting community health, and strengthen strengthening the economic vitality of businesses and individuals. So um, another key part of this uh, plan is that it ties into the future, or not so distant, um, light rail station that will be um, it's a met the light rail is a metro project. It's not a city project, but it's you know it's going to happen. Um, so there will be a passenger light rail station at the inter at that intersection of Paramount and Rosecrans. So this is an opportunity to tie in the adjoining neighborhood to that that future um, amenity, transportation amenity. So um, a station that will take riders um, south to Artesia Cerritos and then north to um, to downtown Los Angeles and beyond. So a little bit of, uh, on the process. So again, this is kind of a, a halfway point. We have been working on this plan for, for a, about a, a, a year. And there's some photos you could see that we've been uh, conducting a lot of community outreach. So including some pop-up events at farmers markets and night markets and um, summer concert series. Get the word out, get that, get that input from the Paramount community. And we did get some feedback about the types of um, businesses people would like to see. Um, parking is a, is a big issue, as with the rest of Paramount. Um, so we that, that point is not lost on us. We um, want to make sure that the plan discusses uh, parking. But at the same time, look ahead to the future and make sure that this area is walkable and safe for, um, for bicyclists and um, people who, who don't, do not have the opportunity to drive a car or park a car and look at affordable housing in addition to the market rate housing. And we want to mix. So we had a, a number of outreach events culminating in uh, October city council meeting. The city council, they, um, at, at, the, at that point, they were in, in support and they didn't have any, any critiques of the plan. Um, so that, that was a, um, a, a good moment for this, this project. And on the right is some, some survey information of what the community was, was looking for, what their concerns are. So we did come up with some goals and principles involving um, 
the commercial area, about uses, there is a um, public support for, for mixed use, which is, you know, when you're going to have this light rail station, it's a good opportunity to perhaps have um, commercial or retail so businesses on the bottom floor of, of future development and have housing on top. So you, um, you have that, uh, vital that urban vitality. And um, so there's some other goals about urban design, mobility, so getting around, parks and open space, still want to make sure that there's um, green space for recreation and just for you know, mental health. And um, we, you know, we're in full support of parks and open space. And again, sustainability, bottom line sustainability. Um, and just looking at the area, just seeing, what, well, what is there now? And here are just a number of examples of some um, the existing types of housing. And we have a zoning map, the existing land use designations. So I mentioned that there's a traditional type of zoning and this is how it is. Uh, we have an RM multiple family residential zone. We have a C3 general commercial, a CM commercial manufacturing zone, and a plan development with performance standards. And as I mentioned, so there's a, a thought that maybe we could have um, uh, a mixed use type of type of a zone. So that's what we came up with. And um, this ma map represents the the change. So uh, uh, possibly allowing a little more density along Paramount Boulevard, and then kind of stepping back as you get farther away from from the boulevard. And then some examples of, um, well, if we were to change the codes to allow to change the to introduce this, this specific plan to allow for more types of, of housing and businesses. Well, how would it look? So we have um, the next couple slides, some examples of how they, um, they could look. Here's another um, example of a kind of a, a mixed use or, or live work type of, a, type of a development. And again, sustainability. These words get thrown around a lot, sustainability, greening. But yeah, it's, maybe it, it helps to, to have a visual. So. There's an example of a solar solar panel, kind of a tree where you could you could charge your your phones walking by, and you know it promotes um, uh, you know moving away from traditional energy sources, uh, you know oil based or whatnot. Um, Bioswales, and you know this drought tolerant landscape. We're moving into the this long long term drought, so we 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 are looking ahead to how how can we have plants and that re rely on less water more efficiently. And again, pedestrian improvements, making it a, a nice place to walk, a safe place to walk. And along with the neighborhoods and, and the types of businesses and housing is, is the street. How can this, the public realm, how does that um, complement the, the private property? So you have the private and public areas. And um, so we're looking at some minor changes that could allow for... Um, Again, more walkability and and biking, while while still maintaining the existing number of, of lanes for cars. And that's we found that's very important to the community. And parking again, we're looked looking at different uh, different numbers of strategies to uh, make sure there's uh, sufficient parking and different parking strategies. And an implementation framework. So again, with specific plans, you have to look at how to, how is it going to take effect? How, how, how is this going to become a reality? It's not going to happen overnight. So we are, this is a 30-year you know, plan. And you'll hear about some numbers about some potential build-out, so, so, so adding more housing. So there's already, based on the existing codes, there's already the potential to, to add hundreds of, of of housing units, but um, this this does allow for maybe a little uptick along the the Paramount Boulevard corridor. And I'm actually I'm going to stop there, um, or actually maybe just re read through this last slide really quick about the discretionary actions. Um, so to have this take effect, we would um, after the completion of the EIR, and the ER, EIR would have to be certified by the City Council. Ado uh, the plan would be adopted, and they would include what's called a mitigation monitoring and reporting program. So, on a ongoing basis, we want to make we want to evaluate the successes and maybe not so not so much of uh, success portions of this to 
to continually improve the plan. We wanted this to be um, a living document. And this also requires with a few things, a general plan amendment, zoning ordinance amendment, and a zone change. And that's where I'll stop and kind of hand, hand it off to August to, to complete this discussion. So I'm going to begin by just briefly going over uh, the what is colloquially known as CEQA. So the California Environmental Quality Act, it's California's broadest environmental law, and it, it applies to all discretionary actions in the state. Um, so to be more specific, projects where an agency, in this case the city of Paramount, um, they're able to use their judgment in deciding if they like to approve or how they like to carry out a project. In this case, for the specific uh, plan EIR, um, the purpose of this the EIR, it's not to analyze if a project is good or bad. It's meant as a value-neutral public disclosure document. And also, I want to point out that also, not all impacts are to be mitigated through this practice. Um, in front of you, i am got a environmental review process. Um, all the red squares in the diagram before you, these are opportunities for public input and comment. Um, you're going to see on the screen the notice of preparation stage that we're currently in and also the scoping meeting. Um, after that, we'll take approximately five to six months to go through the preparation phase for the draft EIR. And then um, this will be circulated uh, and go through a public review period where the public will have an opportunity to, to also have input and then it will go forward through the Planning Commission and public hearing with the City Council. Uh, the topic areas that are to be analyzed in the EIR, um, so there's 19 topic areas for an EIR. Uh, in this case, we're going to be screening out a couple of topics. Uh, that includes mineral resources, agricultural and wildlife, um, but this is essentially leaves a little over 100 questions that the EIR will look at in addressing the environmental impact of the project. Uh, to be a little bit more specific, under aesthetics, we'll be looking at scenic vistas and also if these public views are degraded, um, publicly accessible vantage points. Under air quality, we'll be considering um, if air quality plans or, or cause uh, for in increases in criteria pollutants will exist. Under cultural resources, uh, we'll be looking at historic buildings and um, homes in the area, ar archaeological resources. Um, under hazards, uh, we'll be looking to see if the project creates uh, significant hazards in the area. Um, for hydrology, uh, we'll be looking at drainage patterns, um, such things as soil erosion, um, runoff, uh, and um, also to look to see if the plan would exceed planned stormwater drainage systems in the city of Paramount. Uh, some other topics include uh, unplanned population group growth under the population area, um, displacement, uh, of people in, in homes. Uh, we'll also be looking at public services, uh, the need for new government facilities, the acceptable ratios in the community, uh, response times for fire protection and police services. Um, under utilities, we'll be looking at things such as wastewater treatment and stormwater facilities to make sure that there's sufficient water supply for the community. Uh, also, the capacity of the water wastewater treatment providers. Um, and through this process, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be able to adequate, 
likely determine the impact of the project and if there is significant impact that we essentially need to mitigate for uh, through the environmental reporting process. So as I had mentioned a moment ago, we have our, uh, sent out a notice of preparation for the specific plan EIR on January 6th. Uh, right now we're in a 30-day public review and comment period. Uh, this is scheduled to close on February 5th. Um, this is an opportunity for the community to uh, voice concerns and uh, potential topics that they believe that should be discussed as part of our review process. And um, I will also note out that while uh, February 5th is a, a Saturday, uh, we're making an effort to continue to accept comments for this project through February 7th uh, because that is a weekend. Um, the notice of preparation avail is available on the city's website. Uh, you see it on the slide in front of you. And also written comments for the no notice of preparation, um, they can be um, sent to John King or our assistant planner, uh, planning director with the city of Paramount um, at the email address that you see on the screen or uh, by written mail at the, uh, the city of Paramount planning department's uh, address. Um, so public comments during this process, um, we're not looking to make any decisions tonight. Basically, we're looking at general concerns for the EIR process, and um, we'd like to hear the, from the public what concerns that you have and uh, potentially things that should be addressed through our review process as we're looking at the topics I'd already mentioned. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, John. Um, we're, we're open to questions and comments. And um, the, the comment period will also be open, as I had said earlier, uh, for the next 30 days. Um, and um, look forward to hearing uh, what the community has to say with the specific plan. Thank you, August. So um, yeah, I just want to emphasize that, um, yeah, we're, we'll take comments in a number, a number of forums. So email, if anyone wants to just write up a a letter and just and, and drop it off to our attention at the planning department at City Hall or just even just City Hall it'll make its way to us that's fine and um, and we'll have this uh, well we have the doc we already have the documents up on the, the city website but we'll add be adding shortly um, comment um, options to uh, to accompany those those existing documents and so, um, yeah, just, just want to add that we are really excited. I mean, some, sometimes in these um, types of types of meetings and presentations, it, you know, it could be very, <laughs> seem bureaucratic, but there is, there is excitement. It's, it's just a, a strange time with, with during, the, during the pandemic, as everyone realizes. But, uh, you know, I wish we could be out doing this at a block party or, you know, that kind of thing, just get, really getting the word out. But um, there will be, um, yeah, as, as August mentioned, there's going to be a, about five months to, to, to get going with the with the uh, the bulk of the the work and you know the analytics and and the the draft documents, then we're gonna get a, we will take this on a little road tour with the with the Paramount community, put um, put this out on social media, get some really good uh, comments, and we look we look forward to the, those comments. Um, so so now at this point and then and later on at the um, at at the future phases of the environmental impact report. So um, I think with that, we'll, we'll conclude for this, this evening. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's, who's listening now or any future recordings of this. Of this. Thank you very much.